Hey guys, welcome back to Minty and today's lecture will be on pollution and we're going according to the CSEC biology syllabus. So pollution is a present or introduction of substances that are harmful or poisonous to the environment and we call these substances pollutants. So the first one we're going to look at is air pollutants. Air pollutants are substances that are found in the air that are detrimental or harmful to the environment. The first example is smoke, which comes from burning fossil fuels. It also contains carbon and can cause respiratory disorders. Respiratory disorders are diseases that affect the respiratory tract, for example, the lungs. One such example is lung cancer. It can also worsen respiratory disorders such as asthma. Smoke reduces photosynthesis, which is the plant's way of making food. It can blacken buildings as well, and it forms what we call smog. Smog is when the smoke combines with the fog to form smog, and this can also cause respiratory disorders and can be very deadly. So the next air pollutant we'll speak about is cigarette smoke. Cigarette smoke can cause lung cancer in both smokers and non-smokers. How does smoking affect our airways? Well, for one, it causes injury and inflammation to the airways. It can damage our cells in the lungs and it can cause changes that lead to cancer. It also causes a person to experience respiratory symptoms such as coughing and shortness of breath. So the next air pollutant we're going to discuss is carbon monoxide, not carbon dioxide, which is CO2. Carbon monoxide, mono meaning one, one oxide is CO. It comes from car exhaust. When inhaled into the body, especially in large amounts, Carbon monoxide can prevent oxygen from being carried in the blood by binding to hemoglobin. So normally in the red blood cell, oxygen will bind to the hemoglobin in the red blood cell. However, carbon monoxide is special in that it can bind very tightly to hemoglobin and it can therefore cause oxygen to no longer be carried and so it's released. So the person actually becomes what we call hypoxic, meaning they are lacking oxygen in the blood. This can lead to headaches, stomach pains. It can also lead to unconsciousness and unfortunately death. So the next air pollutant we're going to look at is sulfur dioxide, di meaning two. So we're going to have SO2. So sulfur dioxide is from burning fossil fuels. It can also form a smog with water vapor and smoke. It can cause respiratory illnesses, so illnesses affecting the lungs and other tissues related to the lungs. What's important to note about sulfur dioxide is that it can form acid rain. So when you think about acid rain, you want to think about sulfur dioxide as well. It dissolves in rainwater to form an acidic rain. This rain can destroy plant life. It can corrode metallic structures and buildings, and it can cause water body acidification. So we're next going to talk about lead. Some sources of lead are car exhaust, toys coated with lead, lead-based paints, especially in older homes, jewelry, lead pipes in older homes. The plumbing system in older homes usually had lead pipes and that can leach into the drinking water. And also some pottery. So actually in the 1900s, scientists found that the lead levels in the blood of US children rose sharply. So some interventions were made, such as banning lead in paint, gasoline, and plumbing, and that reversed the trend. But many children are still at risk of lead poisoning. 
Some effects on children include learning disabilities, behavioral problems, malformed bones, slow growth, even seizures, coma, and death. And that's because lead damages the nervous system. So it can cause mental retardation. Carbon dioxide, dye meaning two, so two oxide, CO2, comes from burning fossil fuels as well. It builds up in the Earth's atmosphere, trapping heat and increasing the Earth's temperature. We call this the greenhouse effect. It has many impacts on Earth, and we're going to look at how the temperature on Earth can impact the world. If the Earth is warmed by 0 0.8 degrees Celsius, it will lead to heat waves, oceans being warmed, the Arctic ice cap melting, sea levels rising, increase in earthquakes and extreme weather events, and some species becoming extinct, meaning ceasing to exist. If the Earth is warmed up to 1 degree Celsius, Rare species will become extinct, coral reefs destroyed, and islands underwater. Up to 2 degrees Celsius, the Greenland will melt and polar bears will become extinct. Up to 3 degrees Celsius, the Amazon forest will collapse due to wildfires and there will be food shortages and refugees. Up to 4 degrees Celsius, you will have millions of refugees. Up to 5 degrees Celsius, the most of the world will be uninhabitable. There will be more tsunamis and the earth will be hotter than in the 55 million years. In 6 degrees Celsius increases, there will be mass extinction. Global warming can essentially lead to war, famine, plague, and a global nuclear war. So oil and gas will lead to the formation of fossil fuels. With coal, it leads to combustion of fossil fuels for electricity, vehicles, and heat. Carbon dioxide is released into the air. Burning of forests, fuel wood, and organic debris also leads to carbon dioxide in the air. Respiration of living organisms releases carbon dioxide as well. And carbon dioxide is used by plants in photosynthesis, where the carbon is stored in plant tissues. So we're next going to look at radiation. Sources of radiation are nuclear reactors and atomic weapons. Radiation can affect cell division. It can also damage genes, and if genes are damaged, it can lead to birth defects. And if cell division is affected, that it becomes rapid and uncontrollable, it can cause cancers. Let's look at an example, Hiroshima atomic bombing. It led to multiple birth defects, in infants that were born at the time of the bombing. It can also lead to cataracts, a condition of the eye. This picture is showing an infant whose features have been warped by nuclear radiation. CFCs, which is chlorofluorocarbons, come from aerosol cans and air conditioners. What these compounds do is break down the ozone layer so more ultraviolet light from the sun comes to earth. Too much ultraviolet rays are harmful to the skin and increase the risk of skin cancers. Now we're going to go on to land pollutants, which are substances found on land that are harmful to the environment. Insecticides and herbicides. They are used in agriculture, for example farming, and used to control vectors. As discussed in our previous videos, insecticides and herbicides can poison the food chain by bioaccumulation. 
They also act as a water pollutant once washed off land into the water bodies. Non-biodegradable waste, for example, plastic bags, glass bottles and cans that come from industries and households increase bacteria and attract rodents such as rats and squirrels, which spread disease to humans. For example, leptospirosis is a bacterial disease that affects humans and animals. It's caused by a corkscrew-shaped bacteria of the genus Leptospira. Rats and other rodents are the most common carriers. Next, we'll move on to water pollutants. Water pollutants are substances found in the water that harmfully affect the environment. For example, organic waste, which is waste from living organisms, such as untreated sewage, farmyard waste. So saprophytic bacteria, which is bacteria that do not develop in a living organism, but feed on the waste generated within it, use up the oxygen in the water. This leads to aquatic animals suffocating and dying due to the lack of oxygen. Because of this lack of oxygen, there is an increase in anaerobic bacteria, which is bacteria that does not need oxygen to live. Next, we're going to talk about oil. You might see this on the news a lot, about oil spillages from tankers or offshore rigs. The oil spreads on the surface, and this blocks out oxygen and sunlight from the sea. It is also toxic to some birds and marine life, and it tends to stain these birds and prevent them from flying. It also affects the respiratory systems of these organisms and ruins the beaches, affecting the tourism industry. Dissolved mineral salts, such as phosphates, nitrates, and sulfates from untreated sewage, detergents, and fertilizers cause eutrophication. So first what we have is a nutrient load up where these excessive nutrients from fertilizers and detergents are flushed into the land and then into rivers or lakes by rainwater. The plants flourish causing aquatic plant growth of algae. The water becomes green as you can see in these pictures and then the algae die and saprophytic bacteria multiply. And we said that saprophytic bacteria is bacteria that feeds on the waste generated by living organisms. These dissolved mineral salts are toxic to aquatic organisms. So we're just going to explain it a little more in depth. The excessive nutrients, for example, phosphates and nitrates in the untreated sewage and fertilizers and detergents are flushed from the land into rivers and lakes by rainwater. Because of the excessive nutrients now found in the waters, it causes the plant growth of algae and other plants. The algae now rapidly growing forms an algae layer that leads to the water becoming green. So once the algae has now bloomed, oxygen becomes depleted because the algae layer prevents sunlight from reaching other plants. So these plants die and the oxygen in water is depleted. Decomposition further depletes oxygen because the dead plants are broken down by bacteria composers, which use even more oxygen in the water. This leads to death of the ecosystem because oxygen levels reach a point where no life is possible. So fish and other organisms will die. So next we're going to speak about toxic chemicals such as mercury and copper that also act as water pollutants. They are from industries, fungicides and leaded patrol. They may be directly toxic to aquatic life such as fish or concentrate of food chains harming top consumers like other fish, birds and mammals including humans. We call this biomagnification. 
Typically, the longer a fish lives and the larger it is, is the more the contaminants such as mercury will accumulate in its flesh. Mercury can actually lead to itching, excess sweating, skin discoloration, mental retardation, and paralysis, and also an inability to control muscles. So let's look at these two terms, bioaccumulation and biomagnification. Bioaccumulation looks at how a pollutant accumulates within an organism, a single organism. So bioaccumulation is an increase in concentration of a pollutant in an organism. Biomagnification looks at how that pollutant magnifies within a food chain. So it looks at the increase in concentration of a pollutant in a food chain. Let's look at this example. As you go further up in the food chain, from the algae to the algae eating insects, all the way up to humans, you see that the mercury concentration is increasing as you go further through the food chain. And this is because of biomagnification. Another example of water pollution is thermal pollution, thermal meaning related to heat. The pollutant in this case is hot water and the source is normally a power plant or a power station, which is essentially an industrial facility for the generation of electrical power. So a common cause of thermal pollution is the use of water as a coolant by the power plants and industrial manufacturers. When the water is used as a coolant, it is returned to the natural environment at a higher temperature. The sudden change in the temperature decreases the oxygen supply and affects the ecosystem. And that's because it causes an increase in the saprophytic bacteria. And once this bacteria multiplies, it uses oxygen more quickly. So if you are not already subscribed to Minty, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and remember to turn on your post notifications. We'll be back with more videos.